Okay, so once you've installed the contact player and the factory selection, the factory selection actually has two files with it, so you have to make sure you download both of them, and you have to run the installation for both. So you have to run the installation for, sorry, both the, the contact player, and you have to run the installation for the contact factory selection. It has its own installation. Um, and you can set that up in the default directory. That's totally fine. Now, once you install that and you, you uh, load contact, or you load, sorry, Ableton, you'll have to go into your preferences before contact will show up. Now, you'll have to go to preferences and here file folder, and you'll have to make sure that your VST plugin custom folder is on, and you'll have to browse to the folder wherever you plugged the V or wherever you installed the VST plugins. And then you have to make sure that you uh, it, it it usually scans and finds them right away and then shows up in your plugins folder within live. And if it doesn't, you can just click on rescan and it should scan through. Um, but that's very important. You have to make sure that you browse to the folder that you have all of your VST or at least contact VST installed into and make sure that use VST plugin custom folder is on. Otherwise, it will not show up in the plugins directory. It will also not show up if you installed the 64-bit version of contact and you're running a 32-bit version of live or if you install the 32-bit version of Contact and you're running a 64-bit version of Live. So make sure that you have the same version for both Live and for your VST plugins. If you're running a 32-bit version of Live, make sure all of your plugins are 32-bit. If you're running a 64-bit version of Live, make sure all of your plugins are 64-bit. So once you have that uh, and you check your plugins folder, all of your VST plugins should be installed, Contact included, and then Contact should be down below. Um, whatever track you add it to. And then to get into it, you click on here. I've already activated this, but when you, when you download the factory selection, you get, that con you get the, uh, s the code, and you actually have to sign into your, con your uh, native instruments um, account. So make sure that you sign up for that with your username, uh, type in your, pa your password and make up, um, sorry, make up a password and make sure you type in your email. And then once you've activated it, click on activate, type in your information. Now you have access to all the instruments that come with the factory selection. And it's very much like navigating through folders on your computer. You have band, synth, you have all these, these different folders. And then within these folders, you have subfolders. Well, I guess there are no subfolders in this one, but you have all these instruments in each folder. And if you want to load one, you just double click on it and it will load it over in this section here. Um, and then once it's loaded, if you don't want that instrument anymore, you want to, you played around with it, you want to try a new one, click on the little X here to close it. Uh, and then you can navigate to the next one, or you can use these little arrows up here, which navigate through each um, instrument within that folder. But if you want to check out a different folder, you can then go back to here, go down to the synths or whatever, and then check out one of the synths. And then all the parameters are there as well. Um, hopefully that helps. Uh, you get set up with live and contact free player for live. Uh, it's great to have that native instruments has included this. So um, check out some of the other stuff too. It's, it's, it's excellent. I am not, I am not endorsed by native instruments. I'm just saying that their other stuff is great. So, uh, okay. Thanks. And let me know if you have any questions.